Welcome to the second of our videos of worship for Sunday the 24th of April 2022. In this video, Jean is going to read us our Bible reading from St John's Gospel uh, and then we're going to spend some while thinking about it before affirming our faith at the end of the video. The reading is taken from John chapter 20 verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The purpose of John's Gospel Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, Linda spoke to us about the passage of scripture immediately before this one in St John's Gospel, where Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb, discovers the stone has been rolled away and the body has disappeared, and comes rushing to Peter and John, uh, telling them about Jesus not being there. And it tells uh, of three different encounters with Jesus, uh, with those three people, who obviously had different personality types. Mary uh, was a very touchy-feely kind of person who was deeply emotionally upset by the fact that Jesus' body had been taken away. And to her, uh, Jesus came physically and she was able to touch him, although he did say to her, don't hold on to me because I've not yet ascended to the Father. Peter and John came running to the tomb. Peter uh, was the very full of himself kind, uh, who has obviously taken a leading light into the, uh, in the Gospels. Uh, and he goes into the tomb and he looks around uh, and he is puzzled as to what might happen. Uh, but John, uh, the writer says, uh, he went into the tomb afterwards and saw the things and believed. Uh, the writer uh, of the Gospel, we think, uh, had a connection to John the disciple 
uh, probably uh, he particularly knew him and there are many things about John's Gospel which suggest that John the Apostle uh, was involved in the writing of it and the passing of the traditions. And it says about how John uh, saw and believed he knew in his heart there was something inside him uh, that clicked. Whereas with the other two, we don't get kind of the personal, uh, I persona uh, knowledge of the person, uh, which is uh, part of the modern art of storytelling. The story moves on to the rest of the disciples, and today we focus on Thomas, again a very different sort of person. Thomas was the questions man in the Gospel. When he pops up, uh, he's the one who asks the difficult question, Lord, we don't know anything about death. How can you say, I am the way and the truth and the life, because we don't know anything about what comes next uh, beyond the grave? And those kinds of questions are on the lips of Thomas. And here, uh, as the narrative tells of the way that Thomas came through to a faith, uh, there are four things about Thomas that I'd like you to notice. Because Thomas is a strangely modern kind of figure. Uh, he is not one simply to take things uh, lying down without asking questions about them. He is the modern scientific thought. And here's the first one. When the other disciples told Thomas that they had seen the Lord, he did not say... I don't believe it. Rather, he said, I will not believe it unless. I had a friend once uh, who at one stage, uh, after a long conversation about the Christian faith, I said, uh, Julian, is there anything uh, that would persuade you of the truth of the Christian faith? And Julian said, there is nothing at all that would ever persuade me uh, that the Christian faith is true. Well, it's obvious that Julian, uh, although uh, he was a man of scientific background like I was, uh, it's obvious that he's put himself beyond the possibility of being convinced. What nothing at all uh, would ever convince one. Uh, Thomas was sensible enough to say, well, I don't quite see it at the moment, uh, but I won't rule it completely out uh, because something might happen uh, to help me to change my views. I cannot tell whether there is something that I might come across in the future which will persuade me. Thomas did not foreclose the idea that he might one day become a believer. The same thing about Thomas is he asked himself what it would take to convince him. Uh, here were all the other disciples saying that they had seen the Lord. Uh, well, all right, Thomas would want to see the same thing. Uh, here were the other disciples convinced it was true. Well, Thomas would want to be able to do some fact-checking about it. And so he says, unless uh, I see the nail marks in his hands and put my hand in his side and so on and so on, uh, I will not believe. Thomas uh, allowed himself uh, to ask what it was that would convince him. Uh, the third thing about Thomas was that he didn't walk away from the whole question. The next week, uh, when the disciples were all there, Thomas was still with them. He hadn't turned his back on the whole lot and walked away. It may well be uh, that you're not quite so sure about this Jesus business, uh, and perhaps you watch these videos, uh, or uh, even go to your church uh, if you're not from St Luke's, uh, and perhaps uh, you kind of uh, wonder whether it might be. Well, the message from Thomas is don't give up with the questions. Uh, don't walk away from those who have turned out to be your friends in the past simply uh, because they've come up with something uh, that you can't yet subscribe to. Thomas stuck around to discover whether there might be more to life than he had yet uh, imagined. Uh, the great thing about the scientific method uh, is that scientists do not eternally fall out with each other. Rather, they keep endeavouring uh, to reach the truth, uh, even though their results might not have got them all onto the same place just yet. And then the fourth thing is, uh, when Thomas uh, was persuaded, when Jesus had met the conditions that Thomas had imposed, here I am, Thomas, put out your hand, touch me and see, uh, feel the place. Uh, Thomas uh, had the guts to admit that he'd been wrong and come round to a fresh point of view. None of us is beyond the possibility of being convinced, but we all need to remember that in this life we are on a journey. We have not yet arrived at our final opinion uh, and we need to have the humility 
to admit if we've gone uh, along the wrong road for a while and come back and start going along the right road. Thomas is a strangely modern uh, example uh, for each of us. It may well be uh, that we find the idea of Jesus being raised very difficult on a scientific point of view. And I confess that I was like that myself because after all my background was as a science student, well a math student, uh, at a university. And I wanted to have facts to be able to base my faith upon. But Thomas, by uh, asking himself some proper questions and by sticking around uh, to discover the answers uh, and by not ruling out the possibility that he might be persuaded, was able to come round to appreciating something far bigger than he expected. In fact, in John's Gospel, Thomas is the one who hits the nail on the head about who Jesus is. In the other Gospels, uh, they say Peter was the one who said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But in this Gospel, Thomas is the one who finally comes round to saying, my Lord and my God. If God exists, then the world is bigger and more complicated than we have yet discovered. And we may well be convinced the same way as Thomas was. In fact, this book, says St John, or says the author, uh, has been written uh, in order that you can come to change your mind and to realise that Jesus is indeed the Christ, the Son of the Blessed. May each of us embark on this journey of discovery and find out the truth for ourselves. The Christian Church came to a view about what it means to believe that Jesus is my Lord and my God, and they formulated this in the Apostles' Creed. Uh, if you wish, uh, please join me in saying it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And again we've reached the end of our quarter of an hour, so please follow us into the final video of our worship by choosing it when it appears on the screen after I've finished speaking.